Hello everybody, I'm Ian Abernethy and in this video I want to share some Nepai Po Bunkai with you. Uh, Nepai Po translates as 28 steps. Uh, just as in English the word steps doesn't necessarily mean feet movement, it can also mean uh, stages or progressions, levels if you like. So this kata can be thought of as having 28 lessons. It was created by Kenwa Mabuni, the founder of Shitoryu, uh, and it was said to be a summary of the methods that uh, Mabuni had learned from Gokenki, who was a Chinese tea merchant who taught some uh, crane methods, some crane methods. There's other versions of this form out there. Um, one notable one is Nijihachi Ho, uh, which is Japanese for 28 steps, the same thing, uh, which Kanazawa learned from a mysterious karate, uh, karate master called Inui, um, where Kanazawa said that Inui wasn't keen uh, keen to teach his version of the form, but through a mutual acquaintance, Inui eventually agreed to show him it a few times. So there's a version of that kata, uh, Inui's version, if you like, Kanazawa's version, in some streams of Shotokan, which again is said to be an original, older version, if you like. But what we're going to look at is uh, Nipai Po, Mabuni's version. Very popular competition kata. Of course, it wasn't made to be for competition. It was made to be a record of these uh, these fighting methods and that's what we're going to be exploring in this video uh, specifically the bit where we've got the the dual um, adyuki that flows up from there and it ends with the double shooter so we've got the single knuckle dropping down arms coming up and then the the, the shooter is off to one side that's the sequence we're going to look at which essentially what it's doing is it's a, a series of uh, a combative narrative if you like it's a series of failures saying well if this doesn't work then you do this and if this ha option happens you do this and when we look at bunkai we sometimes expect the captain to be going do this and this and this and this it's not always doing that. Often there's not. It's going, there's this option. If your enemy does this, you go this way. If this fails, this would be the next thing. So it's almost like a, a flow chart, if you like, presented in a sequential manner. So what we have here is we, uh, we have a way of getting rid of a, a grip from the neck and prior in the cut, although we don't look at it in this video, there's other ways of doing that. Um, if, if the grip escapes, then what it does is it executes a throw. If the throw, if the enemy drags you down with you, it drags a single knuckle in to the, the base of the, the jaw in order to facilitate the escape. Um, if, if the throw hadn't worked, then we've got a strangling option. If the strangle didn't work, then we've got a neck cranking option. So there's this little failure of... Uh, cascade if you like moving from one technique to the next to the next depending on what the enemy's responses are it's free flowing uh, the, the point that we use on the downward knuckle because this is a characteristic of this cutter it has lots of single knuckles uh, uh, stuck out not a great believer in those for striking purposes but they're great for gouging and getting into these little pay, uh, places and maybe, you know, uh, eliciting, uh, eliciting some uh, pain uh, responses. Of course, we can't always rely on those. Drink, drugs, alcohol, adrenaline can reduce the effect, but we should still learn them. And the point we use at this point here is that here, just on the back of the jawbone, pushing the facial nerve in. If you're someone who likes acupuncture charts, you know, and using acupuncture terminology, that would be triple warmer 17. Personally, I don't. I find it adds needless um, complexity to it. Um, we're not talking about chi, which is the nerve that we're hitting, so let's call it what it is. Uh, um, Funakoshi, in his book, uh, Karate Do, Oh, uh, Kyohan, uh, 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 Doko is what he calls it, the same point around the back of the ear. Doesn't matter what you call it, you dig your knuckle in there and it hurts, and that can be a useful way to kind of get the enemy to flinch, to turn away from you, and hopefully avoid him dragging it to the ground. So, this was filmed at one of my uh, residential courses. I've, I've included all the footage we got on this particular sequence. As you'll see, there's a little bit of recapping as we kind of explore all the various options, and I hope you find this an interesting exploration of this uh, series of, of the sequence of Nipai Pokata. Right, we were saying there is that if his arm doesn't come loose, right, so again I'm going to drop back down and hit there. Now we'll continue on as if the arm has came loose. Is that okay? So the, the cutter again is diverging. It's going, right, if he doesn't let go, this would be your first option. If he does let go, it would be the next one. So you might just walk through the cutter again from, you may have to from where you're going to start from, really, but yeah, that would be a good place to start. So if you sort of this now, if find his head, give him a smash, right? All, all good. Once you've done that, shift to the other 45 degree angle, drive through. So obviously the camera is constructed in this particular way, but remember the enemy is always relative to your enemy, right? If he doesn't get go, we put the arm down from there, then hit. Okay, the next sequence of the camera from there, then it goes, goes there. So you've got the uh, adyuki. So this is, well, if he does let go, you've got to do this, this movement here. The next part, you may as well have one, goes down to there. Now again, we've got an option. This is saying, right, if he falls to the ground, this is option one. If he doesn't fall to the ground, if you do the next part for me, Lee, that would be your next option. Is that, is, is that okay? So, if we, so we'll, we'll run through them all um, nice and, and gently, right? So, um, uh, Leon ordered me uh, here, right? Brought the head up, I've done the smash, I've done my wedge in, and this time again, it worked. Is that okay? I managed, I managed to drive it off. Once I've got that, if you uh, start from, uh, what about here, if you throw a hook from there, yeah, this position here. The, the adyuki then, it goes straight forward. So remember, it's always straight forward relative to him. So, what I'm doing is I'm ducking under this arm to step to here. Okay, so there's your, um, your, your head block, if you like, you know, just arms going underneath. Remember, I talked about this yesterday. Um, 
If he doesn't fall, that's fine. The camera's got an option for that. But all going well on the following day, right? Again, what I'll do is I'll get this here and that'll take him down to there. Right, now, as Lee wanted to do there, if he grabs your arm, which is entirely feasible, right? Because when people fall in, they grab whatever they can grab, and in this case, it's likely to be your arm. So, again, we've gone from there, we've gone from there, that's a sweet plant here, I'm moving from there, he grabs my arm as I fall. Right, so you've got this downward bit. So, like the cat does before, it likes using this point. So, it goes, right, put your knuckle into the back of his jaw from here and drive down. Is that okay? From there, again, that'll cause him a release from there, and then you can drive back up again. So I think that on the idea of the movement being he's pulled you down, you're not deliberately going down yourself. He's pulled you down, so you dig that knuckle in from there, push, and that's what will cause him to release. So we're just about isolation, so the idea is, uh, guys, got his hook on, what I'm, I'm trying to, to get rid of this, I'm wedging on the inside, I'm just trying to buy some space. That's what I've got to watch them. So I bring my arm up anyway, uh, so on the, on the assumption that he's from a shot, oh, there it is, right underneath it from here. Okay, just like the kind of I hook it again, if he drags me down with him, then I'm straight into here, and then I push it. Which is like the same as a cat Does that make sense? Yeah. And then from there, okay, now I can get away from there. If it doesn't fall, that's fine. The cat will make him fall because it's got a couple of other options with it. Is everyone okay to draw? We've gone uh, uh, from the last one of these before we turn to the, the, the IUT, the job. So, um, if he doesn't let go, you do that. If he does let go, you're in front of him, step behind him, that's where you've got your arm hooked, right? The cat is like, okay, it, it, that's the throw. I'm just whipping underneath his arm. If he falls from there, again, that's it. Pull your arm up, drive your knuckle into his neck in order to escape, right? So the next sequence steps in from there and goes up here. So those two movements are not to be done end to end. They're both options from the failed throw. Is that okay? Oh, oh the successful or failed throw, right? So, and, and you see, I mean, you recognize that as a front strangle, I'm sure, for lots of you. So if a partner's got a hold of the back of the neck from here, we've done a whole ways of getting much uh, out of that. One of them, again, I try and wedge in. On this occasion, it's work. So as I wedge in from there, again, it's up uh, here. Realising there's my opportunity, I'm stepping in and behind, I'm ready to do my thing. Just turn around this way. <coughs> so if, if it, as we just did, if I, that's my, my argument you can take. If it works, but he grabs the arm, which is entirely possible, as we just talked about, my next thought is, okay, I'm going to drive my knuckle in from there, into the back of the jaw, pull up from there, so I can escape. Fine, right? If it doesn't work, so I'm ended up in the same position, but let's just say he leans forwards into it, and I just go, oh, okay, that's not working. And so I, I wouldn't, that bit's no longer required, just do what the camera does, and I cross my hands together and squeeze in from here. And you've got your basic, if you just turn off from the side, if I'm not going to do it hard, but you're all familiar with that kind of front strand, all right? So I squeeze in from there and I choke him out. If that doesn't work, that's fine, the camera's got away for solving that too. <laughs> Is that okay? So it's gone, right, so you take, take, take him down. If he falls, but he's got hold of you, make sure you get up quickly. Right? If, 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 if that hasn't worked from there, then you've got an option to strangle it. Which again, you can flow together, because the arm position is exactly the same. Right? My arm's up behind his uh, neck, there for something. Like, again, hasn't worked. So the stat moves. And then again, so it's not those two issues, you're right, it's not working for me. So I'm just going to grab him from there and I'm going to choke him out. Is that okay? Is it, is it, and everyone okay with that idea? So the cat's not saying do this and this, it's saying if he falls, you might need to do this. If it hasn't fell, then you'll need to do this. Either or. Yeah, so it's either or, that's it. Yeah, it's an all on an and It's two, because again, you could, uh -huh. they're not supposed to like try and get into mouth. It does get into ground. You just might should, you know, throw you. Yeah. And carry on with that. Ball. Yeah, no, but for, for me personally, I try and roll and just continue with the strangle, you see. So that, that, that's, um, without going too far, but that would be one of the lessons you could say from the captain as well. So, which we're not going to do now, because we'll get too far down. But if, if the throw did work, and Lee takes my arm down from there, I can also just go for that same strangle again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, 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 you could do the same thing on the floor if you wanted as well, and the same if you brought you back this way. But again, self-defense wise, that's, that's very much a plan Z. We don't want to be there no matter what. But if we're there, we need to have some skills as we talk about. Is everyone okay to give that one a go then? Everyone's familiar with how to do that front strangle idea, right? So pop it in and move from there. Okay? This is escape here, this works. And I move to here. He said, okay, I go, the, it hasn't gone down, so I go for the strangle, which doesn't work. I then push his arm through, take hold of his neck, spin around and take him down. He said, okay, so that's where we'd be just to take it up to, to that point. Fun form, that one, I like it. You see, then you've got the, this part coming here, basically right? so the double leg hooky, next part pulls in. So that's saying, try and wedge free, if it doesn't come loose, there's your option. No, because you don't have to do all of this in sequence, you know, it's just, you know. Once you're there, you've gone bang. But it, it, I can bring this arm here. If I move away from that arm, that's one way I can change it off. I've got to be mindful of that one, so I bring my arm, bring my arm up. Right? I can be projecting this forwards into a hit. If his arm comes free, then you know, life is good, right? I'm, I'm free and I'm ready to move, or I can move on to the counter. If the arm doesn't come free, so I've gone now, okay, it's still got hold of this arm. I drop this back on the bed and drop down and go back to striking underneath on this one. 
If the hand sold there, you keep that alright. So we're gonna, um, yes, we've done it. The, the, that's it. That's the next movement following what we've just done with the one two. Next part drops down. So that's if the throw works, you do this. Next part, if the throw doesn't work, then you move into this, right? So um, on, on the back of my neck from this position, I've waved through my shoulder shot. I've got this here. What I can then do is realise that this is where the gap is. I can step underneath and put my leg behind. That's your idea, right? Uh, if the throw works, I'll just basically hook and round from there, my legs in the way to stop him standing. One thing he may well do is grab hold of my arm as he falls, right? Entirely likely to do that. If he doesn't, then happy days. But if he's falling from there, he grabs hold of my arm, he's likely to pull me down. So the cat puts that knuckle again into there and then pulls. Okay, that gives us the same posture as the cat. One arm coming up, one arm coming down. Pull the arm free from there, and then I'm in a position where I'm going to escape, right? Um, if I went for the same thing again, but he leans forwards at the technique, so okay, the throw is not going to work at all. Then the next option, like the camera is, it reaches and grabs your own bicep and you're moving towards a front strangle, which you all know, right? Well, squeeze from this side, see from this side, squeeze and you can put him out. If that doesn't work, so if you just move on from the next part there, spins round from there, you've got this bit down here. So again, the cat is mapping out options. What if, what if, what if? So, if the, get underneath, went to do the throw, didn't work, he went forward. Went to do my strangle, whatever, before I've even got it on, he pulls an arm free. When he does that, I want my arm on the inside of this, so I've got some control of it. From there, again, I can take the head from there, which will be very slow, and turn so around, frankly, take him all the way down here. And that was as far as we got with our exploration of the car. Is that okay?